Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to How To Be A Hockey Player, brought to you by the same people that brought us How To Be Canadian, How To Be American, and also How To Ski, and so I can't wait to sink my teeth into this because all their videos are fantastic. How To Be A Hockey Player. Follow these steps and you too can be like us. Step one, buy skates and learn how to use them. More importantly, <laughs> learn how to stop. Nobody wants to be that guy who can't turn around every time the puck changes direction. Oh, Step two, buy a stick, but not a $50 department store stick. The most ridiculously expensive stick you can find. Don't worry about breaking it. There's limited warranty for a reason. Oh, really? Step three, now buy the rest of your pads and equipment and enjoy the fresh oh. smell of new gear, which will last for about five seconds after you put it on. Oh. Step Oh yes, absolutely. Anything like that is just never going to get washed because there's no point. You're just going to stink it up the next week or the week after that and it's kind of cumbersome and difficult to dry out and wash in the first place and so I can understand why with all that gear just never gets washed. It's the same as field hockey. But I am still surprised by the fact that what you just return a broken stick and they give you a new one. I mean, I'm not really sure if you want a new one. If it broke in the first place in kind of unmysterious circumstances, then I don't know, maybe it's just a fault of the product and you just say, nah, I'll just take a different one, thanks. But of course, it has to be just as expensive. And I've also just noticed that they went and put a gleam in his smile and so I can only assume that is to indicate that he still has a full set of teeth that have been yet to be knocked out or something like that. I mean to be honest I kind of do have to take it as gospel considering step one was buy skates and I'm certainly not going to be one to argue with that. I definitely like step one and a half though and that is to learn to turn around slash stop because well turning around is one thing but also slamming into the sidewall is definitely something you don't want to be doing. Step four, know what kind of hockey player you are. The sniper, the dangler, the goon, the girl, <laughs> The rookie, the soccer player, or the one with too much team spirit. Skate hard, let's move the puck, let's get in Step there. Step five, team. it's called beer league for a reason. Enjoy a beer in the change room, on the bench, on the ice, and between whistles. Oh, hey, ref, you spilled my beer, man. <laughs> However, <laughs> hang on a second, I need to go back to that hat because that is unreal. I mean, I'm not sure if it is just a lack of knowledge or maybe it is just my naivety, but I just always presume that the helmets were for impact protection, not for beer holding ability. However, hearing that this is called the beer game and then also seeing that these guys are just drinking at every stage of the game, it certainly helps explain a lot of the culture of ice hockey and even why they have instigating time. On the ice and between whistles. Oh, hey, ref, you spilled my beer, man. However, use caution and avoid becoming the one who is often belligerently drunk on the bench. Oh, come on, Rock! This sucks! Go for the whistle again! Step 7. Learn basic hockey player jargon such as the following. Dangles, snipes, selly, flow, butte, chirp, twig, wheel, chell, bender, dusty, clapper, geno, apple. Step 8. Practice makes perfect. Mess up your garage door by practicing your shots every day. Step 9. Always talk about that time you played Junior B. Remember that one time in Junior B when you got beat up? Remember back in Junior B when I got traded to do you remember back in Junior B when I... Shut up! <laughs> Oh man, there has to be something about Junior B that I obviously am not culturally included in, but that's fine because I've heard enough about it and I've heard people in the comments saying, ah, oh, just don't worry about Junior B. It's an entire thing to get into. However, coming back to these words, they do this in every video and I always just get so lost because I know a couple of them, you know, I know Dangle, it's kind of like dribbling, but then immediately I just get completely lost because if Snipes is not making just a ludicrous goal or maybe even a ludicrous pass, then I have no idea. Let alone the rest of them, they're just all over the place. What tweak, wheel, there's, just, there's no way. On the on the other hand though, I can absolutely sympathize with all the people and parents that have lost garage doors to hockey bucks. You know, the brutality of it, just day after day and puck after puck and shot after shot, you just end up with a garage door that looks like it's been hail damaged, but it's basically what it has been. And look, certainly do not feel as though you are alone in that matter. You know, the Australian equivalent would be number one, probably cricket ball, just making dents since day one, maybe even a field hockey ball. If you want to go big ear looking at Sharon's, NRL balls, soccer balls, all of them, they all just love to make big old dents in garage doors and windows and anything else they could possibly get their hands on. Step 10. Every hockey player loves to brag about their scars. Yeah, I got this one in Pee Wee when my lining hit me with a clapper. I got this in Banton AAA when I took a high stick. Yeah, I totally would have made the chill if it didn't blow my knee in midget. Step 11. Find ways to entertain yourself when you aren't playing, such as recreating classic games on your video game system. <laughs> Step 12. Remember the post-game shower never gets rid of the stench. There is no such thing as too many showers. What? Why are you so smelly? I mean, is it just the gear? Is it the fact that you were just wrestling guys every single week? What is going on? As if it really is just that bad and that chronic, I feel as though you might as well just go stuff it. I'm going to own it to the same extent as I own my scars. Go, okay, I got this scar back in 97. I got this scar back in 2002. And I've been developing this thing since, I don't know, the 50s as far as I'm concerned. Step 13. Learn how to pronounce difficult NHL player names such as the following. Dustin Befuglin, Branko Radovich, Steve Izerman, Cloud Clatterbuck, Kershaw 
Afalawa, Pekarin, and Alexander Seaman. Step 14. Call your jersey a sweater. Wear it with pride. Baby it and wear it everywhere. <laughs> Step 15. Methodically wash the Zamboni driver. Clean the ice between periods. Step 16. Oh, I can only imagine that would actually be pretty nice to see if I can go round and round and round and round just going, oh, thank you very much. You're polishing this surface. I can't wait to get out there and just carve it up all over again. I mean, that does actually make me wonder what and how were they resurfacing the ice with before the Zamboni was invented? Because, I mean, I'm sure it's gone through iterations, but it looks like a fairly new machine in the grand scheme of the ice. Step 15. Methodically wash the Zamboni driver. Clean the ice between periods. Step 16. Learn how to prank the rookies, such as putting sock tape on the bottom of their skates or on screwing the cap of their water bottle. <laughs> Step 17. That's Get so comfortable bad. with your teammates slapping your butt. Nothing says good job like another man's hand on your ass. Right. Get used to accidentally walking on the ice with your skate guard still on. Step 19. <laughs> Learn how to chirp. Hey, Tendi, I've seen coupons say more than you. I've heard better chirps from a dead bird. Step 20. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm not sure if that is another one that is getting lost in translation because I believe, oh, it's so far back, but I believe chirp was one of these words, wasn't it? Flow, butte, chirp, twig. There it is. I thought so. Twig as well, whatever the hell that means. I mean, if I had to take a guess based on the content, text that they gave I'm going to assume it's something along the lines of banter but just his retaliation was brutal. Speaking of brutal though I have no idea what is going on there because they said what I heard was sock tape and I have never heard of sock tape before let alone the next one but it's just so mean especially because that style of Gatorade bottle is a squeeze one so you're just going to squeeze it in your own face. I mean I guess if nothing else just make sure that that water goes on the ice and then refreezes and then you're just resurfacing it but either way the poor fella just is now out of water and has to go lick it off the floor. And then this one also confuses me because well I guess I just don't know enough about skating but what are skate guards i can only assume they're to protect the outside floor so you don't cut it up or maybe to actually to protect the skate so you don't just blunten it so then it's ready for the ice and then also how is putting this tape on it any different to just putting the guard back on i mean maybe the tape is see-through so people don't notice it as much where people are more inclined to just notice the guard and so that is where you're catching people off guard either way that is definitely something that you do not want to do because that guy hit the deck hard step 20 know how to efficiently identify the biggest douche on the ice the guy with the tinted visor <laughs> step 21 <laughs> Many hockey players require extra dental work. To save time and expenses, become your own dentist. Step 22. Always forget your roll of hockey tape at home. Then pester your teammates to borrow theirs. Hey, does anyone have some tape? Oh, God. Surely they all left it at home. Everyone is constantly going to be leaving it at home, especially along with all their teeth and their dentures that they just leave at home, because why would you bother bringing them to the ice rink if you're just going to get them knocked out again? I mean, I am a little bit confused as to why you would constantly be needing tape every single game. I get taping up a stick or taping up something like that, but that's a one-time thing or once a season kind of thing not every single match surely unless you're taping up your socks or i don't know what would you be using tape for so often step 23 learn how to deal with your tape after games by being environmentally friendly or by practicing your free throws step 24 refer to every goal as a butte what a butte bud butte pass bro that was a butte step 25 dedicate yourself to maintaining your flow remember nice. it's a part of you step 26 nothing is ever your fault Blame everything on the refs. Yeah, f***ing Bush League stripes, eh? Get off your knees, you're blowing the game. And <laughs> Google me, three games Junior B. It was probably- <laughs> Oh, once again with the Junior B. He really just couldn't keep it out of his mouth because surely everyone knows how important you are apparently if you do Junior B. I mean, you're just a star of the entire show. I mean, speaking of star of the entire show, look at that hair, dude. That is honestly well on his way to becoming a mullet and I do not blame it one bit. I can absolutely see the mullet making a return or making a comeback or an entrance into the all of ice hockey in general. But I do also love that important note that I missed the first time around and so I'm glad I came back to read Never Chirp Another Man's Flow. Honestly, there aren't many rules in ice hockey but that sounds like one that is followed to a T. And Google me, three games Junior B. It was probably their fault anyways. Learn how to pick up chicks or as hockey players like to call it, wheeling broads. Hey, I'm in town with my dub team. I'm only here for the weekend so uh, can I get your Snapchat? <laughs> Step 28. Figure out a way to deal with your car stench by either apologizing to everyone who gets in your car. Just a heads up, I got wet gear in the back. So. I hope you don't mind the smell. Straight yeah. denial. I don't smell anything. It's probably just you. Or multiple air fresheners. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you were surely going to need quite a few. If the smell of the gear does not come out in the shower, there is no way it is coming out of the car. And so I think for everyone's sake, it is better if you just take a mixed approach of both denial and apologizing for the smell of your car. Step 29. Get used to wearing wet gear, but don't forget to take it out of the car on those cold winter nights. Nobody wants to thaw out a frozen jock strap. Wow. And finally, remember hockey is all about having fun, meeting new people, and sportsmanship. Good game. Good game.
Thank you. <laughs> what did we miss? Leave a comment in the comment section below. But look, once again, these guys have just absolutely hit it out of the park, or I guess in this case, they've hit it out of the rink. Yes, there are a whole bundle of things that do go completely over my head because yes, I don't have any ice hockey experience, but at the same time, it's still sport. Sports are just one of the most worldwide things imaginable. And so yes, you can find virtually anyone and anything in any sport like this. Regardless though, after watching this video, I certainly feel as though I'm well on my way to becoming an ice hockey player. I just have to figure out where to get skates in the first place. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithm things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you were watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the awesome video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.